Well, on Friday, the tablet published a YouGov survey asking people about the power of religious leaders to change views and events. Well, it made rather dispiriting reading for them. Three quarters of those surveyed had never been influenced by a religious leader. Two thirds said they ignored any preaching about personal morality. More than half completely ignored what preachers had to say about matters like poverty, unemployment or international aid as well. Now it said there's no point preaching to the converted but it seems there's now little point preaching to the unconverted either. Have preachers had their day? Not you sir. <laughs> Derek, yes. you, you, you do a lot of street preaching, don't you? Um, what do you say? Do you, have a, do you just shout or do you have a megaphone? Do you stand on a box? No, we stand on a box. I certainly don't shout. Um, I do lift my voice. Mm. But uh, I think preachers have not had their day. It's just as important today as it's ever been to stand and proclaim the message of Christ. Mm. Deliver that message. Yes. Do people listen? They do, yes. In fact, just last Saturday we probably had a crowd of 50, 60 stop in the center of town and listen. Mm. Um, what are you saying? The message that we... I think that every preacher What's your should opening prepare. line to attract people? You know, um, to... We're here to share the good news, the gospel message, which is the good news of Christ. That there, in the midst of all the trouble and difficulty in life, there is hope, and uh, that is found in the person of Jesus Christ. Mm. And have you ever converted anyone on the street, do you think, or just created an interest? Yeah, I think the interest is created there. I think people sometimes get the wrong idea about um, a relationship with Christ. It's something that has to be, the cost has to be counted. It's not, it's something that people have to consider about. And we have folks in our church right now who were reached through the street ministry and mm. though they weren't converted on the street it led them to coming visiting our church it's a process and, and, and seeking that's right mm. well got dr evan harris here from the national secular society who badly needs uh, converting yeah. on, <laughs> on, on 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 three fronts uh, because three. he's he's uh, an atheist <laughs> he's secular but most of all he's a liberal democrat <laughs> so so what would you say to him uh, the, the gospel message is universal. It's for everyone. And uh, that's why I think it's such an important thing to preach it um, everywhere in the world. He's over there. Yeah. I mean, I, see, there's nothing wrong with evangelism, actually. And mm. uh, in a free society, people should be free to seek to proselytize as long as they don't interfere with the rights and freedoms of others. What is welcome about this survey is that more and more people are skeptical about uh, arguments from authority, mere assertions of something without evidence. Because I think when it comes to policy, not personal religious belief, yeah. that's always going to be personal. When it comes to policy, like some of the issues you mentioned, yeah. people should have regard to what the evidence is, not because a person in a, in a priestly frock says so. And so that's, that's a healthy thing. The other thing I think it's important to say, even in, when it comes to personal religious choice, is that preachers are often hypocrites. I'm not suggesting that of you, no, sir. you're absolutely right. Uh, I don't have the evidence. Uh, but if you look, but if you some, look at some of these American, some of those, but if some you look those American, American televangelists have been up to some exactly. very sort of dodgy exactly. stuff. Exactly. In fact, they? the evidence that you're more likely to be the hypocrisy applies to everyone. Yeah. But it's a very you're more good, likely to more, be there's more you're more likely to be uh, hypocritical if you're on television evangelizing, asking for people's money <laughs> when your own sexual morality is dubious, and you see it on politics as well. Nigel Farage, nice guy, says he's a Christian. But he takes this highly unchristian view of the bad Samaritan. That we, must, <laughs> that we, must, we must leave people to suffer or only take people if they're Christians, like we were discussing earlier. A wholly unchristian view. Why is it unchristian to propose a particular programme in addition to the UN Convention of Refugees? Because it's everything discriminatory. We do to particularly say Let, Christians hey, hey, in Syria. Let, let's don't listen, 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 listen. Can I apply the UKIP principle right now? Let's not look back. Let's look forward. We do. Uh, we, we, discussed, do. we look forward. We discussed we that in the last debate. The Sir. Yes, I think absolutely. Anytime anyone is in any position of leadership, you have the danger of promoting yourself to be someone you're not. That's why it's so important that preachers are not promoting themselves, but they're promoting the message of Jesus Christ. Nothing to do with themselves. And that's where people fall, because they're seeking to draw a crowd to themselves. And that's not the goal. It's, it's never not ego. Goal. It's not no. ego. No. No. And, and that's time, the danger we face. But how much time do you spend, or should you spend, preaching against the hypocritical, exploitative preachers? Because yeah, and, and you have a platform. Surely you absolutely. should be spending what you, your time and I attacking do. the swaggots and all these um, um, usually American, not always. I, 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 I'm American and I know, absolutely. And I agree, this is a big problem. And I do, I mention it constantly. 
and I, I first address myself. And I think that's the, the preacher's first What would you say about gay marriage, for example, when you were in the street? What I, would you... I don't ever mention it. It's not the problem. It's not the issue. The no. issue is not homosexuality. I was just wondering if you were a radical preacher. I no, the issue is that all of us need Christ. That's the issue. Not, it doesn't, yeah. All of us have fallen short, the scripture says. Yeah. And Christ has come to bring us back to God. Lucy, you run the, 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 the messy church, which has a very different approach, doesn't it? It does. The message is... Just the same, just the same, um, that, that Jesus is there and, and his love is there. But it's just a different way of communicating. So Messy Church is all about exploring the message, getting, getting your hands into it, uh, learning through doing lots of conversation, uh, doing it in the context of families. So it's not just children on their own, but children in the context of their families. And it's, it's all about growing through experiencing a Christian community um, and the love and welcome and real life that there is there. Is it, more, is it kind of a more softer, feminine way of doing it from that angle at all? Because rather than a sort of, a you know, a sort of Jimmy swaggering, Jimmy swagger. I'm not talking about you here. But, you know, <laughs> yeah. I think if you or saw Pat some Robertson of the... Pat um, Robertson or any of, those, any of those guys. Yeah, if you yeah. saw some of the, the, the very messy things that we do, then it, it's, it's quite masculine um, We all do well. messy things. <laughs> we all do messy things. Yeah. Um, it, it's supposed to be for everybody. It's welcoming everybody. And, and the idea is that we learn best and we grow best as disciples when we're learning from children and from older people, from blokes, from women, from teenagers, and, and that it's a, a holistic, integral, um, whole, uh, wholesome way of So it's of doing things, not being it. preached at, rather than... Yeah. Yes. So, it, uh, what about the people are not listening to the message of morality that we heard there in this survey? What's going on there, and why not? Is this something to do with the erosion of trust in those in authority, do you think? There's a lot of uh, lack of trust in people in authority. Um, and and I, th I think things like Messy Church and the church that you have week after week is about creating the relationships and the trust where genuine perception can take place of what this faith is all about. So you can see if someone's being a hypocrite or not because mm. they're living it out in front of you. Um, I think in a postmodern world, people want to debate and they want to have their say and they're, they're, uh, they, they don't want to be delivered to things, they want to be able to discuss it. Oh, yeah, you're coming, and then audience, a couple of hands went up, but first of all, I can see you twi twitching to speak. Mm. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, what we're talking about today isn't something new. I mean, these kind of questions have come up again and again over centuries. We saw the Enlightenment period, we saw very philosophical philosophers come out and say, look, Major we reason. need to... Exactly, you know, we need to abandon religion and focus on reason. And, and that's a very, a very harsh line to take. We need to understand that the world that we live in enables peoples of all different faiths, of all different beliefs, to come together under umbrella, perhaps, organisations or faiths in order to live a life that they believe will enable them to be a better person. And anything that enables somebody to hold on to and motivates them to become a better person for themselves and for society is perhaps something that we should welcome. That's what you do, sir. Yes. Yes, that's what the gospel message does. It's, it, uh, it's for, for all, to change lives, to influence lives. That's the gospel message. Right, over there, let's get a couple of points. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, white shirt in a second, uh, you, but you, madam? How is it for all when some people are ex excluded? Um, oh, I need to expand on that. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people are excluded from um, religious places where m mm. many of them are funded by uh, taxpayers. So why are some people excluded by religious people? Well, uh, that, that if you your... say that re your religion or whoever claims that religion is for all, then why are people excluding other people? Thank you. That's, that's a great question. Uh, but I would have to say that if there's an exclusion of people, then it's clearly not consistent with the message. And so I don't know which place you're, you're, you're thinking of, but anyone's welcome in our church at any time. Derek, you sounded like one of the politicians in the TV debates. Thank you. That's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, we, we did I'm... just hear an exclusion proposed that we should only welcome refugees if they are Christians. In so addition to all the other refugees. institutionalized. <laughs> but... Sorry, Mark? In addition to all the other refugees, we are welcoming. Well, that's, that's got nothing to do with church, though. Uh, and what is it? Blue, blue jacket, yes. Here it comes, yeah. Rev Reverend Vibert in a minute. Yeah. I believe there is a, a loss of trust in both preaching and politicians' uh, way of uh, talking. And this is because they usually uh, come with the, or an ideology. They, there is something, lo uh, they have lost the sense that they should respect the uh, human, the individual, the personhood, the, the, the individual as such. 
uh, and they present instead of an ideology, and that's why people like you have yeah. pointed out are excluded. A, a, so suspicion, a, a, suspicion of, yeah, a suspicion of ideology, that's Simon Weiber, that's interesting as well. But if we think of some of the great charismatic preachers that are Martin Luther King, mm -hmm. for example, or Al Sharpton or Jesse Jackson, they're, you know, whether you have the ideology or not, they're inspirational, aren't they? That's definitely a part of preaching. Um, it is interesting that, you know, if you use the phrase to preach or to lecture, that has negative connotations uh, in our vocabulary. And the idea of somebody standing six foot above contradiction and, uh, you know, nobody really listening. But it's quite interesting that it, in the Greek, the idea of preaching is the idea of a herald, a bit like a town crier. Somebody who comes with a message from the king, what, it, what Derek's been talking about, um, talking about Jesus Christ as the offer of salvation to all human beings. But actually, in the end, it's, it's not their message. Um, they should hold it humbly, and they should actually um, do it in a way which is engaging and persuades modern people. Well, you persuade with one person, though, as you can hear in America. <laughs> you know, maybe, as the day yeah, goes on. So the lady behind me raised an important point, a uh, second point, which is proselytisation, preaching on the taxpayer. Because while I said that I'm all in favour of people being allowed to evangelise and proselytise, it should not be while they're performing a public service. So we should separate out telling children what to believe in school from schools. It should be for churches and after school and families. We shouldn't have bishops in the House of Lords being able to preach on the taxpayer in a privileged way. It should be an entirely private matter and take it to the street, yes, in the public square, but not on the taxpayer. I and so you see I these... <laughs> I think you're confusing a few things there insofar as I think that the message will stand on its own merit when, when articulated clearly and persuasively. Um, I don't think that's the same thing as proselytising. I think that the idea that you actually say something about Jesus Christ is appealing to people today. I think if you're in a school, you're there to help a process of education. I don't think you should go in and preach in a school. I think you, there is a lot of ignorance about what Jesus taught and what the Bible is all about. And I'm glad when clergy around the country help education. Let me give you an example. Let, let's say there's a Christian organisation that is delivering uh, a social service, a soup kitchen or a shelter, and that's fine. It shouldn't exclude Christian organisations from fine. doing it. It's, it's good news. It's a good thing. <laughs> but I don't believe that they should take the opportunity when dealing with those vulnerable people, when funded as part of public social service shoving the message to, to then shove the message and say mm. you know we expect you to turn up at this service Nadia Ali. if you want your bed or your soup Nadia I think it's a real shame actually that the general hostility towards religion and religious organizations um, is so pronounced particularly when if we think about uh, the Church of England and the stance that is taken on austerity policies and poverty in the UK and it's been a really prominent and useful voice in uh, in pushing back the tide of welfare cuts and things like that. And I think that that's something actually which is part of our uh, cultural and traditional heritage and we should, we should welcome that. Mm. It's a good job I didn't start you on Prince Charles's letters on homeopathy. Yeah, you'd, have been, <laughs> you'd, been here, you'd have been here all morning. So the, 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 so the, the message on welfare, do you have a message on welfare? Rich men and, and camels? Yeah, I think and needles. A, yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, I think as 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 a Christian, personally, I believe we ought to live a modest life, and we ought to do our best to help those in need. That's clear through the pages of Scripture, and uh, whether that be spiritual need, emotional well, need. Some some very wealthy bankers are in spiritual need, aren't they? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Which is why we go out into the streets with the message of Christ, mm -hmm. and we've got to do our best to balance that need. Um, with, with all. You need to go into the offices of Deutsche Bank. Yeah. If they'd let me, I would. <laughs> <laughs> right, we're, we're not long on. Roger, 20 uh, second point. Uh, uh, can I just say that I think preachers have a very important role to play in, in presenting their religion in a way that uh, accepts the existence of other faiths and non-faiths, mm -hmm. so it mm -hmm. helps foster a tolerant world. Certainly. So perhaps not... Not tell people they're going to hell if they don't believe. OK, well, <laughs> ooh. Um, <laughs> as always, the debates will continue online and on Twitter.